Hello and welcome to the third video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering background visuals and background music. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the scripts and assets that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So, last time we had our character over here and we've done a bit of work to make sure that everything looks fairly decent, as much as it can be for now. So, we want to make this now look better. We want to make it look more like a game. We want it to sound more like a game as well. So we're going to bring in uh, the first of two assets right now. We're going to bring in another image, which is going to be the background. So instead of this blue, we're going to have it as something else. So let's go to our assets folder here and let's right click, create folder. So we've got a new folder here because this is going to be all for our backgrounds. So we'll have this as background, um, just background IMG, short for image, I guess. And in this folder, I am going to drag and drop this image. And you can get this image if you want. If you go to the pinned comment or the description, there'll be a link there to the Patreon page where you can go and download this asset for free. So, what do we do now with this? Well, this image itself is not the best thing in the world. It's just something I managed to create using AI. Um, you can use any image you want. You can go ahead and create your own AI images. Like I say, you can use this. There's no copyright on this. You're free to use it as you want. Uh, but to get this into our scene to make it useful, we have to create another image. So let's go to Game Object and let's go to UI and let's go to Raw Image. Now, much in the same way as we dealt with our character, Kasumi there, this is going to be the same sort of thing. So as we've added this in now, let's name it straight away. Let's have this as class room back. And what we want to do is we want to make it so as it covers a whole scene. So let's drag and drop this image over here onto the texture. And it's very small right now. We're not going to use the rec tool to change the size of it. We're going to use the move tool and we're going to adjust this accordingly. So let's have this as um, probably 1920 by 1920, I, I think we'll go for. And let's see how that looks. So one thing to keep in mind is the actual order of everything you see is important. So you can see that as we've added this new image, it's below Kasumi in the canvas. And this is important. Because if we move it upwards, Kasumi will now appear in front of it. So the ordering of what you have in the canvas is important because whatever is further down is rendered foremost in the scene. So whatever is at the top of the canvas, i.e. in this case, the classroom back image, that is rendered first. Next layer is going to be Kasumi and then next layer will probably be the text box when we create that. So let's now put the position on the X and Y as 0 and 0. And right now, because our scene, uh, sorry, our game view is not actually in the correct uh, scale, it does have these at the side. Now, there's things you can do. Do you remember when we played around with this free aspect and changed things around? You can change that if you want to. You can keep it as free aspect or you can zoom in with the image a little bit more. So, for example, if we wanted to have the image as, let's say, um, 2100 by 2100. Still a bit small, but I'll do it 2200. And see how that looks. OK, so that doesn't look too bad. Maybe I could move it up just a little bit to about there. Mm, maybe not. It's up to you how you want it to look. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to use these same images that I do. You can get your own from wherever. So let's click on Game View now and let's click on this school back. Now, 
As we've imported it into a 2D environment, it has automatically selected it as a sprite. Now, do you remember when I spoke about if you import it, it may do it as default? Well, let's set it to default and press. Um, in fact, no, we don't want to press play yet, do we? We want to apply and then press play so we can see our game view rendering. In some instances of images, it doesn't make a difference whether you do have it as a sprite or whether you have it as the default image. As you can see, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So let's press play again to stop that view. Let's head back into scene view. Let's go back onto our school background. Let's set it back to 2D and UI. And let's generate mipmap and apply. Now, this will make it ever so slightly smoother, I think is the right word to probably use in this case. But again, it could be worth playing around with some of these settings to make sure you get the kind of background and feel that you would want. So let's go on this classroom back object up here. And now let's play around with the color. So, so far we've only put a texture in there, but what happens if we change the color from that white to something else? Well, if you set it as gray, it starts appearing darker. So you could use that to your advantage because you could technically use the same image, put a blue kind of hue on it to give it a slightly evening sort of look, I guess, or you could put orange on it. I think that's more evening, isn't it? I think the orange kind of look is more evening and the blue kind of look is maybe more night time, I guess. So I'm going to have it as more of an orange hue. So there's how it originally looks. And we're going to put it about there to make it look a little bit more in the evening. Because this first scene that I want to put together is based um, kind of on the evening. So what can we do now? Well, I think it doesn't look too bad, considering it's only third tutorial in, but it doesn't sound any good. So let's add in some audio assets. So let's head back to our assets folder, right click, create folder. And let's call this audio. And now in this audio folder, we're going to create another folder because there are two different types of audio that we can use. We can use music and we can also use sound effects. And if we were putting voice in it, there'd be a third option of voice lines. We may put some voice in it. Not quite sure yet. Um, but for now, we just want to create some music. So what we'll do is in the audio folder, right click, create folder, and I'm just going to call this BGM. Short for background music. And what I want to do is I want to, let me think, how can I do this? Let's just drag and drop rather than try anything else. The good old tried and tested drag and drop. So this music file will be part of the same pack as the image that we brought in. Again, link is in the description and in the pinned comment. You can go and get it from there. And all we need to do is apply this music to an object. Now we don't just apply it to any object. The best way of doing this is ordering the objects in the hierarchy in a logical sense. So what I mean by that is if we go to game object, create empty and call this audio. And on that now, if you right click on audio and you can then create empty again, it will create a child object. Let's call this BGM. And what we'll do is we will drag and drop this BGM onto there. So now we have applied our music right here to the scene. So if we were to press play, it would indeed play. So let's go over here and press play. Give it a second just to render everything together. Now this may come across quite loud or it may not come up on the uh, recording at all. Hopefully you can hear that. Okay, so we've got our music in there. What else can we do with it? Well, we could change the volume, have it a little bit lower. We can change the pitch as well. These are two options that I feel can really make or break some audio assets within Unity. So we've lowered the volume a little bit so it's not quite so prominent and we've increased the pitch by 51% because we've set it to 1.51. If we press play now, it will 
sound very different when it renders. Now, if you can hear that, I don't like how that sounds at all. That doesn't quite sound right. So I'm going to set the pitch back to 1. In fact, I'm going to have it as 0 0.9. So it's going to be a slightly lower pitch. And let's see how that sounds. Hopefully it's not too, too bad. There we go. I think that, that fits it a little bit more. So we'll keep those settings as they are. Now, obviously, you don't have to use the same music that I use. You can use your own. You can go ahead and do what you want. Um, play around with the settings as well. Uh, one thing that is ticked here is Play on Awake. And we are going to leave Play on Awake ticked. Um, basically, that means that whenever the scene starts, the music will start straight away. We'll also tick Loop so it continually plays. So once it gets to the end of the track, it will play once again because we want it to keep going. We don't want the music to suddenly stop. That would seem quite jarring. So at this point, it does start to look like a visual novel, as we would expect. But it's still got a long way to go. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to bring in the next character and we'll also create a fade screen. So what I want to do is kind of make it start off black and fade into our game. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series, and I will see you next time.